I'll bet you got nothing better to do on Wednesday than to talk about hot penny stocks to come to the right place. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is August 9th. I want to invite you to my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When you hear the market bell going off at the end of the day, me and my co-host Taylor, we're going on live. We're there for an hour to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. All week, I'm sharing stocks with you that I think you might be interested in, but this gives you an opportunity to actually lay it on the line. Just come on in, drop it in the comments. Me and Taylor will go over the information in the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it. Now, I do put up a placeholder for this early, about 2.30 in the afternoon. So if you can't be there or you want your stock looked at, sometimes I can't get to all of them. We're only there for an hour. So put your ticker in early. That gives me time to actually look at it before I go online. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So you know what we do on this show, don't you? We look at hot penny stocks. That is to say we're looking for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I'm particularly interested in finding these sort of stocks by looking at the charts. I'm looking for charts that look like they're ready to break out, have volume coming in. When I find a hot chart, then I just go looking for a match to set it on fire. I'm going through the news presses and the filings looking for a catalyst. And these are the sort of stocks we look at on this show. And today, well naturally, I've got three more for you. First one we're going to take a look at, oh man, I looked at this. It has to have been about two years ago when they were first getting set up. This is Global Hemp Group, ticker GBHPF. Now, I'll be honest, I have not kept up with this company since I did look at it back then. I do know quite a lot about it, but they seem to have expanded. The company deals with hemp building products. They have a community, a big piece of property up in Hayden, Colorado. They call the Hayes area, where growing hemp is legal, producing hemp products is legal. So this company basically built a campus. They have this growing area where they're growing all their hemp. They have a factory where they are creating building materials out of hemp. Hempcrete, which is like concrete, except it's a lot lighter, very strong, bug resistant, mildew resistant, fire resistant, and it's constantly for its life sucking carbon out of the air. You can make hardwoods out of hemp three times harder than our hardest wood. So you can be making cabinets. Those hempcrete blocks, they are insulation. You don't need insulation if you're using those. You can paint it, you can drill through it, hammer into it, absolutely. They make insulation out of hemp. They make all sorts of boards and planks and building materials and this company builds that stuff. They make it. Then they have another area where they're building homes out of the materials that they have as a showcase to show off to the world and they're using a lot of other green sort of technologies in these homes and this is what they're doing showcasing it so they can do it all around the world well they also tell us down here that they have expanded and i don't know a lot about this but they're getting into uh, the therapeutic aspect of hemp the company has expanded its scope of business into natural biological therapeutics having acquired the exclusive North America licensing of patents and IP from Apollon Formularies, a UK-based international pharmaceutical company developing cancer treatments, now check out their ingredients, from natural biologics, including medical cannabis, functional mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms, and combinations of these compounds, which to date have actually shown successful independent third-party results in preclinical testing. Apollon utilizes an artificial intelligence-based drug discovery platform. God only knows what you can find when you get somebody that smart doing your drug test for you, AI. So the company's got a lot going on in the building side and now they're working with the therapeutic side. And we haven't had a lot of news coming out from them here recently, but we had an update, which sort of tells us a little about everything that's been happening. But what really caught my attention was this chart. It is cool. She hasn't had any activity in a long time. And the one day she did have activity, I can't find a catalyst for her. So I'm not quite sure why she bounced. But then 
all of a sudden today she decides to break through the 200. Now I think it's the initial breakthrough, not the run, but now would be the time to look at it. So GBHPF, what a ticker. She finished the day at a very low price, 0035 with just over 16 and a half percent gains. On the pink tier, she's current and she's got some verified information. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Folks, if you're going to be trading pinks, by golly, get as much verified information as you can. The problem with the OTC is that you don't get enough information. We're working in the dark. We're having to trust management. If you're going to do some serious due diligence, go to the management first if you're getting into a pink. If you think it's going to be good for a long hold, you better make sure the management don't botch things up. So they are also being considered a shell risk. This means they're in business, but they're not making any revenues. And that's probably the case right now. But things look like they're about to change. I don't know how quickly, but I do see a lot of potential in the company. But it is the charts I'm looking at right now. They say there's some activity. And that's really why we're looking at it. So let's take a look at the relative volume for the company. Well... We did have an increase, I'm not saying it's much, but she jumped from a meager 40,000 shares up to a meager 50,000 shares. There was a little more activity today and she did take some gains and the chart looks juicy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Looking at the share structure, go oh boy. All right, outstanding share count is 358 million. Insiders, this is a hedge funds, institutions, and the management, they've got a total of 7.8 million if these numbers are correct, which leaves us, subtract the restricted from the outstanding, you end up with your float, which they call the unrestricted shares because they're allowed on the market. That's the float. They tell us it's 350 million, not a great float. Financials, they say they're a shell risk. They've got nothing coming in, nothing on the annual or and nothing on the quarterly. So we don't see any money here. We've got to be interested in their balance sheet at least. Let's see what we've got. All right, we've got cash in the bank of 48,000. On these charts here, we have to remember to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. So 48,000, that's all they got in the bank. Assets, really, really $74,000 in assets and total liabilities, 2.6 million. Very surprising to me. Considering that they got all this land up there in Hayden, Colorado, I don't know, I just don't get this. Taking a look at the disclosures, we don't have anything here. So let's jump on over into that news. Now there's a lot of news we could catch up on, but I've only scrolled back here to March. They tell us here that the company is adding Israel, the European Union, and Morocco as exclusive global licenses from Apollon formularies. They are working with this company and they're doing more and more with them. And that's what a lot of this news is about. Final payment made relating to the exclusive licensing of Apollon formularies. And then up here, uh, Global Hemp Group concludes the first U.S. sub-license related to recently acquired exclusive North American license of Apollon formularies. Now, they did not acquire the company, just some of their intellectual property. Now, we got another big piece of news here that just didn't pan out. The company announces an initiative to produce affordable, carbon-negative hemp-based housing in Quebec. This was being done through a grant and they had to qualify for it and there was just a lot of competition and they didn't win. So the one piece of news I do want to jump into is this update. It gives us all the updates for everything we've just been talking about. This came out August 1st. So they tell us up here that on January 9th, 2023, the company executed that binding letter of intent with Apollon, a UK-based international pharmaceutical company developing cancer treatments with all those wild ingredients. Under the terms of the LOI, letter of intent, the company acquired the exclusive perpetual license forever and ever for North America, yes, United States, Canada, and Mexico for certain Apollon intellectual property and proprietary technology. However, 
Per the terms of the LOI, the company was also granted the option to acquire the entire company if they chose to. However, they tell us here that the parties have made a joint decision not to proceed with the acquisition of Apollon's assets, but rather to work together going forward to sub-license the exclusively licensed Apollon intellectual property throughout North America. Then they give us another update. They created another company here on April 28, 2023. The company announced that it had issued its first non-exclusive sub-license to Medicinal One, a corporation created specifically to launch online e-commerce sales of the Apollon branded products, including both functional mushroom and hemp-based products throughout the United States where legal. Then they give us that catch up here with what happened in Quebec. It's a nice story, but it ends sad. We just didn't get the deal. So they've got things going on. They've got a company here that is going to be marketing Apollon's products, whatever they are. I honestly don't know. Some more due diligence. I know they've got the Hayden property up there in Colorado. They got a manufacturer up there. They're growing their hemp. I just need to do some more due diligence. Are they building any of these homes? I know there are states now that have passed it. It was illegal to build hemp homes, but now it's getting legal in more and more states. And who knows? Maybe the country will subsidize buying a hemp home like they subsidize buying an electric car. Wouldn't that be cool? So I don't see a whole heck of a lot of catalysts. I do see a lot of potential, but it is down the road. I think hemp homes would be big, and I don't know enough about a pollen to say what they're up to. But if they can find something to help with cancer, oh yeah, that's going to be big too. But as I said from the very beginning, the reason we're looking at this was the charts. The charts have been different, and I think it's a sign that there's going to be a breakout. May be short lived, but as day traders, that's all we need. We're going to take a look now at Global Hemp Group, ticker GBHPF, and we're going to be doing this on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get it when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So, this is a six month, four hour view for the company, and it's not very impressive, it's not very inspiring. We've got two bumps. <laughs> We've got one way back here. This hit on uh, February 3rd. It was huge. It went from 007 up to 042. You can think of that as going from 7 to 42. What does that give you? 600% gains. And I can't account for it. No catalyst. She just jumped. Came all the way back down underneath the 50 and sat down there for quite a while until the 200 came into the picture. Then she worked her way up to that 200, tagged it a few times, and that's all she did. She fell down to this low bubble of 0008, which she hit at the beginning of June. And from there, she just bounced back up and she's been dribbling back down. It wasn't until right there, August 1st, that update we just read together, that's when she started to break out. That's it. That's all we got. She has been pushing up since then. She was down here at 0026 and she has worked her way up to 008. She took a flying jump today, folks. She started down here at that 003 roughly going up to 008. You're looking at 150% gains just right there. She broke through that 200 with a lot of power. And where did she end? We're at 0035 and aftermarket. We'll have to see on the very last chart. She closed the day at 0035, but I see she hit a high of eight and the full bar is up here at 0057. So I'm gonna be interested to see the five minute chart. Oscillators. Our PPO is pushing up nicely, just like the MACD. Green bars are accumulating. RSI is pushing up. It is currently at 57. Volume is low. No doubt about that. Some volume would help this a lot. 20 day, one hour view. Flat, right? And you see this purple line that turns blue? That's my haul, my 200 day haul. We have been talking about this a lot lately because penny stocks have been paying heed to it. Look at this. It's sitting right on top of it. Now, a lot of people don't use this. It used to be popular a while back. I had to add the 50-day SMA during COVID because that became the predominant SMA. Well, right now, it seems like the 200-day haul is a predominant SMA. 
So she broke out over that 50, went straight to the 200 before she even got close. She wasn't even halfway there. She decided to jump fast. This was first thing this morning. So she jumped from that 003 all the way up here to 008, and she has fallen back to, uh, well, it says 0035, but it looks like it could be over that. Again, we'll have to look at the five-minute chart. Osculators have a lot of heat in them, but you can see they're cooling off right now, and the RSI is taking a big drop. But keep in mind, the RSI is the price line. If we turn all these bars into a line, like these SMAs, it would look exactly like the RSI. That is the price line. Let's jump on down to that five day, five minute view. Not a lot of trading going on here. She's been riding on her 20 day SMA, barely pushing up. She had a nice leap today. She's fallen back down right to that 20 day SMA. Now, actually looking at that four hour chart, folks, I'm thinking of this as a indicator. It came virtually all the way down. She went all the way up to eight and came down to what? 035, which is way down here. So that's what I call an indicator. I am looking for a directional, intentional spike, a piercing to break the veil of the 200. I want to see her come back down. I do. And then I want to see her fall no lower than where she started. This fits perfectly. So now I'm watching for her to make her breakout. This was her telltale sign. So I am liking GPHPF, <laughs> what a ticker, for the short run. I think she is great for a long shot, but God only knows how long that is going to be. So GBHPF, put it on your watch list for the next couple of days. See what happens. Without exaggeration, I am excited to share this stock with you. This is ticker GNS, Genius Group Limited. This has got to be a perfect play. Now, no, I'm not saying I guarantee she's going to run. What I'm saying, though, is she has got every box ticked that I look for for a hot penny stock and ticked with a big old fat green marker at that. First off, she's on the major exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange. You can now trade this for free. You can get in, get out without it costing you anything, and you can trade it pre-market, aftermarket. The chart, it is primo. It's perfect. It is an atypical breakout chart, giving us everything we look for. We have our directional, intentional spike piercing that 200. Then it comes back down, and it's rounding back up to the 200, breaking out right now with volume. All we need is a big, fat, hot catalyst, and we got it. They came out with news just the other day that they are doing a spin out. They are going to be putting a company onto the major exchange and giving away dividends. And in this news, they give us the cutoff date for when you have to have your shares bought and the distribution date for when we're going to get our shares. And this is the sort of news all investors are looking for. So it's looking ripe and juicy to me. GNS, she finished today at 75 cents with just a little over 17.5% gains today. Now, because she's on the major exchange, we have to take regard to the price whenever it's under a dollar. They have a minimum bid price requirement up on the major exchanges. If they go under a dollar for too long, they get a warning. They get like six months to get the price up over a dollar for 10 to 20 consecutive days. If they don't do it, they get thrown off of the major exchange down to the OTC market, and nobody wants that to happen. Now, I was concerned, so I went through all their filings. I could not find anything in the filings that said they've been warned. However, there's a piece of news that says they got back into compliance. So it looks like they've fallen out of compliance again. But the way the charts look, and as hot as this news is, I'm thinking she's going to hit a dollar real easy. You like the way that sounds, don't you? So what does this company do? Well, they are a company out of Singapore that deals with online educating, primarily with entrepreneurs. Genius Group is a world-leading entrepreneur ed tech and education group with a mission to disrupt the current education model with a student-centered, lifelong learning curriculum that prepares students with the leadership, entrepreneurial, and life skills to succeed in today's market. The group has a user base of 4.5 million in 200 countries, ranging from early age up to 100. 
it's never too late to learn. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's what we're talking about. 300% increase in volume, jumping from 3.3 million up to 13.6 million. Expected. Share structure for the company. Not a lot of information over here. Uh, they tell us the outstanding share count is 27.7 million. We don't know what the float is, but we know it's not more than that. It's not a low float, but it is low. I like it. Financials for GNS. Looking pretty good. Last three years, she's been jumping from 7.6 to 8.2 to boing, $18.1 million. We know it's millions because we've got to add those three zeros to any of the numbers down here. And they got to keep quite a bit of that. Looking at the quarterly, they just don't give us the information over here. They've got quarterlies, I'm sure, but because we're on the OTC market and this is a major exchange stock, sometimes you just don't get everything you want. But you can see they are making money. Let's take a look at the balance sheet since we're here. All right, remembering those three zeros. In the bank, they have $16.8 million. Not bad. Assets, everything they own, including their investments, $91 million. And total liabilities, all their debt. 84 million. So they are above their liabilities by about 10 million. Got 16 million in the bank, and their revenues are growing strong right now. And they got a spin out. Disclosures for the company lots of them here. And believe it or not, I did dive into each one. I didn't read every single one of them, but I scoped them out. None of these really are of interest to us as day traders. You've got a financial here, a 20F, because they're from Singapore. It is a financial that is for foreign companies. There is an A behind it. That means they amended it. This looks to be the annual. This is the period end date. This is for December of 2022. They had something wrong in it. I don't know what it was, but it's been fixed. And then we have an F1 here. They're going to be putting some units on the market. Units are package deals where you get a share and you get a warrant. And then you can separate them and you can trade your shares and you can trade your warrants or you can hang on to your warrants because that will allow you to buy a share of the company stock in the future at a much cheaper price if the stock has gone up from now till then. All right, that takes care of our filings. Let's take a look at that news. So I have gone back here to the beginning of June. This is when they regained compliance. And now they're back out of it again. But I think they're going to get over a dollar with what's going on right now. They had another piece of news in June. The company launches Genius Metaversity in partnership with Vatim. Another education course. They got lots of different courses. And I don't know how many different organizations they're working with. Then they got a warning letter from the New York Stock Exchange. This is the first time I've seen one of these. They said too much on Twitter. They revealed information that had not been publicly disclosed elsewhere, and they got in trouble for that. Nothing happened to them. They just got a warning letter, which is bad enough. Don't do it again. And then the big news that came out August 7th. They tell us here that the company announces the timeline, record date, and share distribution date for the spinoff of Entrepreneurial Resorts. Entrepreneurial Resorts is a place where entrepreneurs live and work together. <laughs> Don't that sound like fun? On August 1st, 2023, the Singapore High Court approved the spinoff of ERL from Genius Group. This process is anticipated to be completed within the next 30 to 45 days. We've got our window there. Genius Group has set the record date for August 31st, 2023. Shares purchased and held two days or more prior to August 31st will be entitled to receive a dividend. What they're saying is the T plus two rule. Transaction time, folks. You buy it, it goes into the system. It takes two days to finally get settled in the system. So if you were to actually buy them on the very last day, it wouldn't be in the system until two days later. And even though you bought them in time, they weren't recorded in time and you would not get your dividend. So whenever you have a date given to you, always go two days before. They go on to tell us that the exact per share rate 
will be announced to shareholders soon after the record date. So we don't know how many shares we're going to get for how many shares we own. Genius Group has set the share distribution date of ERL on or about September 29th. Now that's not in stone. On or about gives them leeway. So if you're absolutely counting on it on that date, don't. It sounds sure, but we've seen this before. Following the share distribution, shares of Genius Group and ERL will trade as securities of two separate public companies with Genius Group dual listed on the New York Stock Exchange and Upstream, ticker GNS, and the new company ERL will be listed on Upstream, ticker ERL. So that's where your dividend shares would be for Upstream. I've heard a lot about people dual listing on Upstream, and I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about it, and I've never dealt with Upstream. So again, more due diligence is necessary. But it is hot news. It's exciting news, and we need excitement in this drag butt market we've got right now. And the chart is looking primo. Let me share that with you. Oh, poor you. You can't see how delicious this chart is from that perspective. Don't worry, I'll fix it for you. This is Genius Group, ticker GNS. That's a six month, four hour chart. And as you can see, she had a wild rip, both the high and the low bubble in between this surge, which took about 30 days. She started down here at 29 cents and ran all the way up to 871. Taking a couple pit stops, hit a high here of 543, another at 627 and then 725 capping it off at 871 before she came down hard and fast through the 200 bouncing off of this support which I drew from right there where she broke out last time she was at a low of 29 cents she was at 50 cents when she hit the 200 day SMA and launched well that's basically what we got going on right now we have lots of indicators showing she wants to jump but none of these can get on top because it's still too steep so now we get this token indicator, our directional intentional spike, and it has to be high. Why does it have to be high? Because this affects all the SMAs. You had to have it high enough to pull up the 200 day SMA. It's been falling. So we got to get it to come up. So that had to shoot way up. That's why I consider it an indicator. And if you look, you can see right now she is starting to go flat. So she had her piercing, came back down to the same area, not any lower, and then she turned around and she got some momentum and busted through the 200. Came back and then did it again. And right now she is over the 200 at 75 with the 200 day SMA at 72. So she's in perfect position. We got lots of volume coming in over the last five days and you cannot ask for better oscillators. Every single one of them are pushing up. We got a forest of green bars here on our MACD and our RSI is clear up at 65 virtually. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a whole lot going on for most of this time. She was dwindling downhill, went underneath the 200, underneath the 50, hit that support from that big surge all the way back. Bounced off of that, there is our indicator pulling up the 200 day SMA on the four hour chart. Fell back down and she bounced off of that folks right through her 200 on her one hour chart, floating on her nine day SMA with lots of green activity after market right now. All of our SMAs are turned up and about ready to cross the 200. Soon as that 50 day crosses that 200, which looks like tomorrow, that is going to be a power punch. Boom, that should push this price up. Oscillators, they are still very strong, but we do have a pullback, a cool down on our MACD, but it's not looking dangerous. And our RSI is at 67. Oh, we just had a bounce there, folks. She just jumped higher. I love this live action. Coming down to our five day, five minute. So there's that big jump. She's bouncing off of that support. Once she got off of that support, she jumped on to the 200 day SMA, then graduated up to the 50 day SMA, which is where she's at right now. Good, I'm glad to see that. The only thing I really didn't like about this chart was that 200 day haul coming over top at a price pushing down on it. I didn't like that. We needed a bar to get over that and break out. I'm not quite sure what the price is right now. Is it uh, 
75 or 76. But you can see the battle is on. Our 200 day SMA is supporting this move. It's on an uphill climb right now. And looking at all of our oscillators, you can see this folks, every single oscillator has got a wicked turn right now. They all just turned and everything is pointing up. It is looking good folks. Oh, keep climbing baby. GNS, they've got a spin out. They're giving away a dividend. It's not gonna be on the major markets from what I can see. Looks like it's gonna be on a whole different market, but I still think there's gonna be excitement around it. Remember, you don't have to play this for the dividend. You're playing it for the profit. So get in, ride it up, jump with your parachute and let it crash without you. Our next penny stock comes from the OTC market, but the best tier, the QX. This is the most trustworthy tier on the OTC because it's the most transparent. You virtually get as much information from the companies on the QX as you'd get from one on the major exchange. This is IES VF Infinity Energy Systems. Now, you know how I find the stocks we talk about. I go looking at the charts first and I found heat in this chart, but it's very obscure. Maybe I'd only recognize it. You know how we keep talking about that directional intentional spike that goes from here through the 200 and then back to here again? Well, put that in the mirror, flip it upside down. I've got one that does exact same thing in reverse. It goes through the 200 all the way down and then bounces back up. And I see that as a token sign that the stock is going to go up. I see it as a pillar. Normally you see it when the price has been rising and starts to dip, it'll give you a pillar like it needs support. And I see that over and over again. So I think this is going to bounce. And we had big news come out today. One of the ministers of Canada visited the company's facility and they had a discussion with other leaders in the same sector about green energy. So, Infinity Energy, she finished today at 59 cents with just a little over 7%. And as I said, she's on the QX, the best tier of the OTC, and she's got a lot of green credentials over here to prove it. So, what does this company do? Well, you know, they make batteries for storage to store energy, commercial sized batteries. And I mean commercial size. And these are different than any battery I've ever seen. Vanadium, I do believe they call them vanadium flow batteries. These batteries have electrolytes that are in water and they have two tubs of water side by side inside a bigger tub. So in case they leak, it doesn't come out. And then they have energy come in through wind power, solar power, anything, and they charge up the water. And here's the great thing. Because it's water, it doesn't catch fire. You don't have that problem. And because there's no chemicals or anything like that, most of it is plastic and not steel. And catch this, they say this thing will run indefinitely. But because you can't put that on paper, they give it a 25 year lifespan at the least. So they tell us here that Infinity's factory built flow batteries run continually with no degradation for over 25 years, making them suitable for the most demanding applications in renewable energy production. Energy storage systems based on Infinity's batteries are safe, reliable, and economical and range in size from less than 250 kilowatt hours to tens of megawatt hours. Now you saw that video. That's each one of those big containers holds three of the batteries. And they say, from what I was reading, it takes six of them to create the power cell that they want to make. Infinity was created in April of 2020 through the merger of two flow battery industry leaders, Red T Energy and Avalon Battery Corporation. With over 65 megawatts of system already deployed or contracted for, Delivery across over 70 sites in 15 countries, Avinity is active in all major global energy storage markets and has operations in the UK, Canada, USA, China, and Australia. Whoa, I didn't know they were that big. Looking at the relative volume for the company today. Ah. Oh. She is way, way under the radar. My God. And she fell even deeper under it today. She's normally only doing 5,000 shares a day. Today, she did 4.5 thousand shares. 
I am going to be really surprised if she jumps tomorrow just based on the chart that I am reading. Share structure. Share structure. <laughs> Outstanding share count, 191 million. They don't tell us to float, so it's going to be somewhere, anywhere under 191 million. Financials for the company. Um, they were down four years, three years ago, kicked up to 4.3 million, but look at all the money they were losing in 2021. 2022, they're at 3.5 million for revenues, and they got to keep about 800,000, which is a heck of a lot better than the year before. Looking at the quarterly, now what is going on here? This is on the QX. I don't know why there's no quarterlies over here. Let's take a quick peek at the balance sheet. Cash in the bank. We have $6.1 million, $63 million in assets, and only $22 million in liabilities. So they got three times as much assets as liabilities. They got money in the bank, and they are making revenues and profit. Looking at the disclosures, nada. So let's jump on into that news. So I'm back here to June of this year. Uh, they've got some project that they've started. I have not read any of this news except for the one that came out today. First Minstrel Pilot Project. So they probably have a little piece of their uh, battery over there and they're testing it out to see how well it works for them. Then we got a piece of news here in July. Uh, a 0 0.2 megawatt pilot project with Australian energy utility. So there you go. It's probably a 0 0.02 megawatt pilot project here at Minstrel. And they got another one going on here in Australia. Then we had the big news that came out today. Canada's Minister for Energy and Natural Resources visits Infinity Facility. So they tell us here, Canada's Minister for Energy and Natural Resources visits Invinity's facility. Invinity's Vancouver facility provides backdrop for announcement of Canada's first clean energy strategy. The company, a leading global manufacturer of utility-grade energy storage, was delighted to host Canada's Minister for Energy and Natural Resources, Jonathan Wilkinson, alongside British Columbia's Minister of Jobs, Economic Development and Innovation, Brenda Bailey, at the company's newly expanded manufacturing facility in Vancouver yesterday. Invinity's facility was the venue for a clean energy roundtable discussion attended by the Minister Wilkinson, and they were joined by the other minister, Bailey. They were also joined by a number of Canada's leading clean energy technology companies, which Invinity was invited to. Earlier this year, Invinity delivered an 8.4 megawatt Van Diem flow battery, the largest flow battery project of its kind to Canadian renewable project developer Elemental Energy's Chappis Lake Solar Storage Project in Alberta. The project, which is expected to go live shortly, will see a 21 megawatt solar array coupled with Infinity's battery to generate low cost, low carbon electricity on demand for the Alberta grid. Folks, that's getting in with the country on the Alberta's grid and it's going live anytime here. One of the biggest energy uh, projects they've ever seen with the green energy programs up there. So we are expecting new business to come from this meeting and we've been told they've already have something launching right now. I see a lot of reasons why this chart should bounce. So when we take a look at it, don't say, what's that? Ah, see, you were tempted to say it. This is Infinity Energy System sticker IESVF. That is a six month, four hour view. Back in December, we had our low of 26 cents. And in July, we had a high of 72 cents. As you can see, she is on an uptrend. Our 50 day SMA is climbing up. She has been rising and falling around this 50 day SMA. And then we have my token sign right here. Yeah, the one that looks the absolute worst. That tells me, in my opinion, we're gonna see that this is going to climb. Just the same way, she falls from up here, down through the strong SMA, bottoming out and then coming back up very quickly and coming right back to her same zone. I normally find this to be a pillar, a strength 
support her so that she can continue to push up. We have got some more green bars all up on top of the 50 day SMA. Volume is not very strong, right? We were at 4,000 shares. She has been falling over these last 10 days. Oscillators are in recovery mode right now. This is just starting to push up while this is pushing down. To me, that is a token sign. It's a pattern. My PPO, if it's going up, and my ADX, if it's going down, as long as they're spreading, I know my price is rising. So this is setting up nicely. Our MACD is looking sad, but she's on top of her signal line. Red bars are getting smaller, and it looks like she's going to cross right here. It's a little bit of ways, but you can see it is in the works. And our RSI is very cool. That is down at 50 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, not a lot to see. There's our big drop. That's our drop from, well, where was she? She was at 64, went down to 32. That was a 50% drop, and she came right back up. Not as high, but she is here at 60. She's right back in her same zone. That's what we're looking for. Come back to the same zone quick. And then she's been working around the 50. And right now she's arguing with the 50, going sideways. And all of our oscillators are pretty plants and tough to tell what she's going to do. Five day, five minute, that don't look good. And that's really not enough information. So really all I've got here, folks, is my four hour. And I bet everything on that. I am thinking that that is a pillar to support one side of growth and the other side of growth that is about ready to come. We're going to see. I've put this on tape, so I can't back out of it now. It's been recorded. I-E-S-V-F. It is the evidence we'll be looking at later. You know, folks, I do about 45 to 60 stocks a month. That's what we're looking at on these shows. And there's a lot of stocks I really don't get a chance to follow up on. I try. I'm posting this information over at Discord and on Twitter, trying to show you we are taking gains. A lot of the stocks we've been covering have taken big gains. APYP, we covered that July 31st. We just covered it yesterday. It took more gains today. I think we're up to 440% gain since July 31st. We had a stock PTN that we just covered two days ago. That's up 20 23%. And we are finding these hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. You want to know what a hot chart looks like? Look at the charts I'm bringing you and then go see if you can find those and then go see if you can find a catalyst. Those are your hot penny stocks. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.